Kick a hyperspheric every time I run up on a track You know I'm not whack, you have to step back Cause if you don't I'll prove that I'm the Mac Every time I kick the lyric, tune it to 295 Yo, do you find me live? If you don't, then that's alright Cause I just grabbed the microphone And I just gotta get so hype But I'm speaking a hyper tone And so many times I might get thrown And here's the place where I like to roam And all the girls that I like to bone Have the big butt, no they don't Cause I don't like that nigga shit I just here to make a bigger hit When I be kicking the hype is open Trying to say that Eminem is the best to see it of all times Yeah this clip is brought to you by BattleOnline.com. Bro, bro, nothing y'all can tell me. Nothing y'all can tell me. I'm cooking your rap, God. The, the guy that you've been obsessed with, the, you, and especially the black stands. Ugh, 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 ugh. ugh. <laughs> Y'all the fucking worst. Ugh. The the black stands. Oh my god. Yeah, so there we have it, guys. Benzino, who absolutely cooked Eminem on rap Alvis. Benzino's track it did give me shades of the game but just in terms of how we kind of punctuate and rap on certain tracks so you know a lot of people are making a lot of noise and saying benzino didn't write it he has spoken out himself and said well you know so what he wrote the most of it he had a few people in the studio they threw some lines together and stuff and you know i don't think that's something that people should hold against them i think the track was dope it was ill you know it was a shocker because everybody was accustomed to hearing I guess the more simplified versions of some of Benzino's disses, not to take nothing away from his rap style, but, you know, he's usually straight to the point. He wanted those um, punctuated kind of rappers. So I think with this, the way that he had so many different dynamics going on and, you know, used a lot of the same terminology that he had always kind of spoken on as well. But, you know, if you check out his interview, so I think that's one thing that really made this song stand out yeah so as we know benzino hasn't been the first time that his diss them and them it's been an ongoing thing for years you know he dissed them years ago early millennium you know the source they put out the racist tapes that eminem did him and his white guys made the rap racist hour he did it when he was 21 years old Big butt. no they don't because i don't like that shit. the label came out and said he was 16 and he had a black girlfriend look at how they um insulted our black people's intelligence Look at how universal at the moment Jimmy Iovine insulted the intelligence of black people around the world. They're in a room. Man, we got to fix this. What are we going to say? A lot of PR people that's getting big money. All we got to say, all we got to say is that he, he was 16 when he did. 16, because people figure, hey, he's a kid. Kids make mistakes. He had a black girlfriend. Let's say she was black. And she broke his heart. The, the cassette was made by Maxell. We did our homework and found out that the serial number on the cassette, the, the tape was made when he was 21 years old. A lot of people got against Benzino then. I always felt as though where Benzino was coming from, it had more significance. It was more than just who's the better rapper. He was actually speaking out, you know, defending the culture, speaking, you know, just from his standpoint. He could sort of, I guess, working in the media, he could potentially see what was happening or what was occurring with Eminem just being projected to where people might class him now as like, you know, rap god or rap goat and all this sort of stuff when that wasn't the case when he came in. And to be honest, his skill level hasn't necessarily changed since when he first came in. If anything, some might say it's declined. One of the things that I've noticed now with Benzino from his recent interviews, he's been able to maybe articulate a bit more that it was actually him standing up against white supremacy which I feel as though is very significant and important, especially within hip hop and the culture of the music. Um, a lot of people argue and say once, you know, it's out there, the culture, once the music's out there, everybody can participate. And I don't think that's an issue. Um, Zeno, he did an interview on Art of Dialogue and he kind of broke that down saying, you know, there's been other white rappers and stuff that people haven't necessarily taken that much issue to. I think the issue with Eminem is the fact that the industry and a lot of stands, white and black, they 
support the the false narrative that's propagated that says he's the best and you know how can you be the best of something that you're kind of imitating others who are the originators of that's always been my take with it and you know not to take nothing away from Eminem's skill I see him as a good participant to hip-hop I don't see it as he could be a GOAT and this is something that we've heard not just from Benzino it's gone on for years been echoed by other people from Nick Cannon to the game um, Dr. Umar Johnson, Melly Mel, and you know, as much as people may dislike Benzino or his message, it's no coincidence that others are saying the same thing or have said similar. If he's right for saying what he's saying, then the only reason that I could be wrong is that I'm black and I said it. Now, the only reason why I said it, and I'm gonna take full responsibility for whatever uh, for whatever conflict it, it caused. Uh, I'm going to take full responsibility because I said it and I'm going to stand behind what I said. Even uh, Freedom Unique, a.k.a. Short Circuit from No Limit, he's got quite a few tracks where he has addressed similar over the years. And to be honest, between him and Benzino, they're the only ones I've really heard kind of break things down at a level where it's like, OK, you can understand where they're coming from, um, you know, their stance for the culture, their stance in terms of defending the culture and how important hip hop is to them. AOM, pull up, son. Let me holler at you, boy. It's never been a white god. You know you gotta get checked on the set, right? It's only been it's what a white been a god they stole. Created someone else. God. Let's talk lyrics, punk, no weak shit, pussy. You fast rapping bully tracks, but that shit funny. Y'all heard me, but y'all know y'all can't take shit from me. Can't be a god, and it's never been a white skin mummy. But you could be a rapper, relapse, take pills, all that. Say you a devil, but a god, M, you can't say that. Only white gods has ever been, been made up facts. And we got hove, typical devil, you ain't no god or no rap. <laughs> In research, historically, what white man did is attain the likes of others, take them for themselves, and gain power, riches, and control. So when we look at hip-hop, you know, some people may say, well, you know, it's for everybody. I remember that movie that came out years ago with Danny Huck called White Boys. And it was about a group of white boys that were emulating hip hop and black culture. You know, they used to wear do rags and the, you know the apparel and all that stuff. Kind of similar to M, like when he first came out. I know his style has probably changed now visually, but he used to you know adapt a certain look and mannerisms. And I think that's significant because when we then say hip hop's black culture can't forget Lord Jamar, him and Eminem also had that backers or forwards. It's something that other groups and other races, anytime it comes to stuff that black people create, everybody wants to be a part of it. And oftentimes everybody else wants to try and take it over and act like, you know, they're the best at it or push themselves to the forefront. And I think that's one of the dangers we've seen just with hip hop. And I've always respected Benzino's stance. I've just been a defender now. People might look and say, well, who's he to defend? Some people have even said, oh, he's mixed. He shouldn't um, be the one to defend. But it's not just him that has said that. We've heard Dr. Umar. We've heard a lot of other people, Lord Jamar, Melly Mel, and others. Even Snoop Dogg chime in and say, you know, M tight, but he ain't the best or he ain't in their top five or he ain't in the top 10 in their eyes. So I think that's what it comes down to. People shouldn't be forced to have to say, Eminem is the best or Eminem is the greatest or Eminem is this, this rap, god, rap god or rap goat. Me personally, I don't agree with that either. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Ain't his up. I cooked him. Now, you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, he cooked me. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. But what you stands is not going to do it. What you saltines ain't going to do is try to come here and be like, that. I didn't do it. I didn't affect him. Stop it. Because that shows that y'all ain't real hip-hop fans. That shows that y'all are biased and probably halfway racist. If, if it's dope shit, give it up. Just like my people give it up to him. Stop being racist, white people. If it's dope and I rip them, say it. A lot of you guys already are. A lot of you fans, salute to, salute to the stands that are in my... DM saying, listen, Zeno, I'm an M fam, but that song is dope. Salute to y'all, man, because that's what it is. My people give it up to him. And I'm going to keep dropping 
disrespectful it's not going to stop the whole 2024 because you know what i think i think that people are tired of that this is tired of that now maybe his people ain't but my people are tired of that talking about nothing make some goddamn sense spit some balls man we ain't on that shit no more we on better you know what i'm saying hmm? fuck you man hmm? fuck you man getting ready to do some collab with my man d tomorrow in the studio straight from the bahamas you know what i'm saying having a meeting right now by the feature is good all that that y'all saying about all that I bet you 287. You see me cracking them hundreds on each side. I'll break one of y'all's jaws. Y'all see me out here. I'm not worried about y'all. I ain't worried about a near But this is hip hop. We gonna keep it on wax. All right? It's good for the sport. All that sucker shit y'all saying about my neck, my arms. With... Stay with a baddie. My chick's a baddie. Stay with a baddie. Yes, yeah, so since then we've seen a lot of people come and try to rebuff even some of the statements recently Stephen A. Smith has got viral somewhat for making statements saying he thinks Eminem is a better rapper than Nas and says he gives it to you simple and plain and you know that's just a lie I personally think you know he lacks merit especially to be making these types of statements um you know you see some people agree Mainly, um, mainly white people, to be honest, mainly white hip hop fans that herald Eminem in that way. But there are some black stands and stuff also. So I don't want this to be one sided. So I'm showing you some of these guys who are like pro Eminem. And, and here we see Donald Rollins shares his opinion on Dr. Umar saying Eminem can't be greatest of all time because he's white. And he says, comedian, actor, and radio host. Donald Rollins recently sat down with Vlad and said, here's the thing, this is the opinion of Dr. Umar. Me personally, I can't focus on someone's opinion. I like to talk about things that are fact-based. That's his opinion. There's some people who think he could be, and most of those are white people. And there's a lot of black people that say, all right, enough's enough. Let's admit that Eminem is a nice mf and rapper. So he says, I will put it like this, Eminem, it's even tougher for him to get to the point where people would even mildly respect him and it to be straight because he's white. I understand that certain fields and things, we broke color barrier, but for him to break the black rap color barrier for people to even consider, it took a long time. F that white boy, it went from there to wait a minute, he's nice and nice. So, um... You can check out some more of these statements. It looks like he's got a lot to say. But one thing he said, he said, everybody's top five is all subjective. And with that, I'd agree. He said, if you like Jay-Z, you like Jay-Z. If you like Eminem, you like Eminem. But me being over 50, I don't really have time to argue about it. It don't make no sense. So it's a great point. One thing, you know, we do know music is subjective. And that's one thing why I always feel it's interesting where they try and super force Eminem into this position because we know music is subjective and you know we're not going to have a consensus on everybody agreeing on something but it seems that they want to force the issue so much to say you know Eminem is the greatest so um let's see this is another old quote it says I didn't know it from Dr. Dre apparently it says I didn't know Eminem was white when I first heard him because he was just too good first of all I didn't know Eminem was Caucasian when I first heard him the first time. I just loved the delivery and the kind of, I, I believe this is a lie to be honest, because I'm sure he was familiar with who he was when he checked out. And he says, Eminem is just black in white skin when talking about hip hop because he knows so much about the culture. I denounce that if Dr. Dre actually did say that, but you can't say he's black in white skin. I don't agree with that. And, um, it's not about knowing so much about the culture, you know. There's a lot of people that know so much about the culture, but you're not going to say they're black in whatever skin they're in. You know, people making this skin color too much of an issue. And it's not even us as the hip hop fans because we've embraced white rappers over plenty of white rappers. It's like I put up a post the other day saying T Bow Firecracker from No Limit. We like T, we love T Bow. We like um, Paul War, even going back, Milk Bone. Um, 
to a degree, Everlast has been a lot of different rappers. Um, Cypress Hill, you know, tons that it's been no issue. So I think just the Eminem thing, it's his crazy stands and the false perception created by the industry that pushes him to the forefront. And we see um, Corrupt, it says, Eminem got away with dissing other rappers because of his race. And he spoke about Melly Mal's comments and says that he feels that the rapper has benefited from white privilege. When he talks about Melly Mal, he said, that's his opinion. You know, um, that's not our opinion. The way Dr. Dre took Eminem, the subject matter wise is one thing, the way Eminem rapped it. He's about a rapper, so he's hip hop, no matter what color he is. Dr. Dre took him this way, so you know that has no bearing on his skill. His skills are renowned. So, you know, corrupt speaking on white privilege. And like I said, I think that's ultimately the major issue. We we'll see another one here. This was um, Flavor Flav, and he says Eminem, he calls Eminem the best rapper alive and says nobody can't beat him. So, um, yeah, I guess Flavor's back on that dope, unfortunately, which, you know, would be a shame. But he says, yeah, you know, <laughs> I go, I go, Cloud Flag, but he says, Eminem is my favorite rapper, word up. And not only that, he shout, he still shouts Flavor Flav out in his records. Yeah, boy, you know what? Check this out. I don't care how they're trying to cut him, my man. No pun intended, I guess. It don't stop him being number one. That's all I got to say. And being number one don't have no color. All right, word up, man. Eminem, man, he's the best rapper alive right now, man. Can't nobody beat him out. When you can't be beat, that means you are the best. I got to call BS on that, you know. Flavor, sorry, but I got to call BS. If you, if you can't beat him, that's one thing. And like we already established with uh, music and hip-hop and certain things being subjective. But, you know, let's be clear here. There's people that can beat him and already have, you know, I think the game brushed him. I think Benzino bodied him with his new stuff. And um, and there's been countless others. So I think all this nonsense about he can't be beat and all this, it it does sadly reinforce the um, false notion of white supremacy. And, you know, it's a shame to see such um, heralded hip-hop pioneers like a Flavor Flav take that stance. And I'm not saying he should be against him I mean it's his choice if he likes his music and stuff like that but for him to put out a false narrative of saying he's the best rapper alive and nobody can't beat him I've got to call BS on that yeah so some might say you know what does it matter it's music it's hip-hop it's here for everybody but you know like I always say when we look at the culture whether it be hip-hop R&B soul jazz blues dance all of these other genres we have seen infiltration in different ways. And, you know, there was a lot of hoopla recently from uh, some some white people who was very egregious towards Beyonce because they felt she shouldn't be entering country music. Although if we really want to get into country music, we can see who were the originators and the progenitors of that form of music also. But, you know, that's a whole different story. We could look at Charlie Pride and different people, but you know, if they can be like that when it comes to what can be uh, considered as their genre, even though, you know, that could be debated. But I think it's just such a shame that hip hop and a lot of other platforms so easily let others just come in and milk stuff. And I think that they give other people false props sometimes for doing stuff that isn't indicative to them that's already been done by some of our people. But I feel that, that they give a lot of false preps. Or, you know, I don't know, maybe black people are easily impressed. Let's check out some this clip. I can't imagine England without black culture, black music. You know, it's all, it's, it's what I've grown up with and it's all I know. I mean, you this know. is Amy Winehouse, you know. I know you guys love Amy Winehouse. A lot of people love Amy Winehouse. You know, um, so this is her when she was alive. Speaking, saying England couldn't really do without black culture and black music and how it influenced her. You know, it's in my blood. I just can't, it would be a very bleak place, a very bleak place without without black culture and music. If you wanted to get brownie points with your girlfriend, you could do anything. You could sleep with her mum and then be like, shall they tickets, baby? That's it, do you know what I mean? Game over. 
Charlotte was, she was it. When I was 14 or 15, I had my own little world going on. And I know, you know, black music and black culture comes from, from, from guts and your heart, definitely. So if you're at that age and you're looking for something to connect to emotionally, it's there, it's all there. Yeah, so then we hear from Amy Winehouse. And I think it's interesting because now what we've seen is a lot of others, they've adapted what was created by blacks in terms of the music and the culture to express themselves and, you know, speak on some of their issues. Like, we hear a lot of white rappers now, especially in the UK, and, you know, they're rapping, um, I guess, about their issues and, you know, the white plight and the white struggle and stuff like that as well. So, you know, hip-hop is something that we give to the world and we've gave, given to others in that aspect, but we want to be rightly accredited for it and, you know, peace to those that do that. Um, Snoop Dogg also posted this on his Instagram. Let's check this out. Some music history. So. I don't like oh, yeah. Oh, this goes. That's yeah, gonna be the bottom part of my life. And I was just grabbing it, okay? Who do you think I want your house? So I guess this is looking at somebody who Alvis mimicked or stole influence from, however you want to slice it. It says, Music history receiving Clifton Powell say so much stolen from our people we never knew. Oh, peace to Clifton. For audience. As he demonstrates here in the movie Let's Rock. So peace to Roy Hamilton, the originator. My father was an amazing balladeer. He had a great operatic. Okay, let's cut one. His musical hero, seen here in a rare movie appearance, was Roy Hamilton. My chickadee, come here to me. An obscure R&B singer who greatly influenced Elvis' vocal style. Roy had a record called I'm Gonna Hold On Tight and Don't Let Go. Well, I stop a million bucks. I love you so. I just... Yeah, guys, so there you see Roy Hamilton. Just a clip I wanted to share with you guys, but that kind of brings it full circle to, you know, the rap Alvis track that Benzino came with. And for those who are probably not as astute, maybe it can give you a bit of understanding of where he coming from and why those statements were made. So I want to say, share this last clip. This is, um, I believe, somebody from the UK who used to be a so-called UK rapper. Now he is um, imitating the Jamaica sound and culture, and I think it's pathetic, but I'm going to let you guys judge for yourself. Yeah. M. Money Man. I mean, you know, I know that we all live in areas now that are quite diverse in a sense, but, you know, you see some people like just the, the mannerisms that they adopt and um, the vernacular of their actions that, you know, isn't naturally indicative to them. But that's another story, I guess. I think that's where we're at with, with stuff now. Um, let's hear this guy. So this is UK Grime. Um, let's go. Let yeah so you know we have um a bit of mediocre rap right there and you know, some people, they fans, they receive in some of the comments, some people say, oh, it was good, he was good. And that's the thing, you know, black people, they so impressed by other people doing something. And it's like, you know, what are you going to say next? That this guy is um the best in the UK? Yeah, 
Give me space, give me room. Rap back one at a time, you know what you mm. uh, Music don't work out for me. I'ma go back to the line like a queue. Uh, fumes take a fuck up the tune and me in a life stress, so don't fuck up my zoo. Uh, I tell a boy, shut up and move. The- yeah, so there you guys can hear a bit of it. What is done? Now? When it the drama, too, got me up in the bar in Gibraltar. You know, implementing the Jamaican patois and giving it the large and the attitude and stuff. So you see where he done come from. You know, he's just picking and choosing which aspects of the culture he want to try out, like a new hat or a new jacket. Push the love our music. Then collectively, with a stand up and listen it and all on panic because what? I owe us something. And on a body else something. You have imitators and duplicators of our something. But remember, we are the blueprint. We are the masters. We are the architect. And people, especially I and I, they know the valuation of what this music entails to the world. So you see the younger youth and we have come up. Do not remove your forefathers' boundary. Your ancient barriers, keep them as it is. Because you see what the forefathers have done for us, yeah. for us to stand up. Yeah. If we do not appreciate love and celebrate the work of our forefathers, then we don't have a future. Mm-hmm. That is the reason why you have other people are tampered with things. <laughs> <laughs> and I go and let them come for rule with things. Money well, I'm not going to say it, but thank you. Say it again to me then. <laughs> well, so it is said. Our music, I feel better, man. Our school, then. Yeah, so you hear a little clip there from Shabba. You can check that out on the back that music group channel. And same thing, man. So you see how that relates back to the hip hop. You see that passion right there. That's the same passion Benzino coming with, man. Saying you got people trying to take over the thing and you know making money and not putting nothing back to the. You know what I mean? So this is the this is the this is the mentality, man. So I'm just breaking it down for you guys at, at a rudimentary level. Even going back some years. I mentioned the movie White Boys that came out and um, I always find what's interesting is people say the terminology white boys but when you use it they take it as a dislike I put up a post recently about T-Bow the firecracker and it was saying you know T-Bow firecracker from No Limit uh, white boy you know um, and that was his whole thing white boy swag and I mean he was probably in jest but he came and commented on it and said oh you know I'm not white I'm Puerto Rican and I'm like you know I don't know if he felt some type of way because I'm like when you guys want to flex and call yourself white boys and all we're doing this, white boys, that, and then when we say it, you take it as like a diss, but I don't know, it's, it's kind of strange. But that movie, White Boys, that came out, at the time you see, um, this is some write-ups about it, just giving you the scope of how people saw things at the time, just with hip-hop and how things were changing within America. And I think there's some interesting segments in here where, let me see... Um, it says White Boy is the film that ex- deals exclusively with the theme of white middle age, white middle America teenagers taken by hip hop and gangster rap. Um, let's see. At Woodstock '99, more than 200,000 people jammed in to hear white rap rap bands like Kid Rock, Limp Biscuit, and Corn. So, um, you know, there with some bands like those that have adapted the rap style and. We didn't necessarily have an issue with it. They were doing their own thing, you know. Fred Durst, he had a few little joints here and there, man, you know. He says in white voice, Flip Dog and his white friends are struggling with the deep identity crisis many working class and middle class white kids are also grappling with in today's multicultural and competitive society. It says, you know, Hutch's character swears he's really black and that he has a skin disorder that causes him to be white, but being black in his mind equals being a gangster and i think that's the thing where it's like oh uh, that's an issue there where especially in terms of that movie where the stuff that they adapt when it comes to um blackness oftentimes it can be construed as negative negative. and you know it says uh wiggers are just a modern day vestige um black masculinity and comportment has had this cachet of coolness. So, so uh, it's interesting, I don't really use that term no more. We see, here we see some old studies 
I recommend you check out this book, Beyond the White Negro, Wiggers or White Allies, White Hip Hop Culture and Racial Sincerity. So it looks at Eminem, Danny Huck from the movie White Boys, and a few others and their culture their cultural immersion into hip hop. And you know, also this <clears throat> is another interesting blog from Slanty Eyed Mama. And it's called When Wiggers Go Wrong. And she says she ain't hating, but she starts off and says, I ain't hating on Eminem or Danny Huck or anyone else who has made part of their career by talking black or talking hip hop. So she also goes on to saying that she's a mixed race artist and she's not going to support nationalistic or ethnocentric rights to music. You know, she thinks once art is popular and it's out there that you shouldn't segregate the audience or the artists by claiming this is ours only. As I said, you only really get people say that when it comes to um, stuff that's really considered to be black. You know, when it's black, it's it's, 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 it's a free-for-all for everybody. And yeah, when it's black, it appears it's a free-for-all for everybody, but, you know, others have their own stuff and they're allowed to have their own stuff and keep it that way, but when it's the blacks... Everybody want a piece of it, so uh, you guys have to let me know what you think. Yeah, so just to reiterate, this is nothing to do with skin color. We know that we'll get some people that'll be like, oh, this is racist, or it might not be what they like to hear. However, this is about cultural preservation, and also just telling history the right way, because we've seen just throughout history that oftentimes things that are created by black people are stolen and given credit to other people so you know while we're here we're going to do our due diligence and just make sure that things are told correctly let me know your thoughts in the comments peace to everybody worldwide salute the whole hip-hop family no matter where you're from i'm gonna close out i did mention earlier freedom unique aka the katza short circuit from no limit you can check out his channel like a black down lot of fam mafia there you see it and this is an old joint that he had Addressing M, so you can peep this. Katsa, one time. Yeah. Since I warned in my morning, I got my shit intact. I told Marshall, you sign us or give our culture back. All of us dressed in black, all of us strapped with gas. I put voice in the voice, voice. Funeral, he dead in rap. Trash rappers wrapped up in bags. Didn't even have to tell y'all that. Every rap out to chase that bag. Blue face and all over the track. Slipping, fucking tripping about some fame they fucking never had. Good rappers who spit so bad. Don't nobody want to claim their ass. Fast rappers, y'all rap so fast. Who the fuck trying to dance to that? Stupid, ain't no soul in that. It'll never be a white guard in rap. I was gone, I heard that came back. Where's Eminem, no lip? Ass. No, where's Tory? He's stealing ass. Where in Canada, Jack and Swag. First Drake sound like Kanye. Now Tory trying to sound like Cass. White rappers want to all be black. These black kids want to war with black. Dumb nigga, that's just so whack. Whack 100 doing shit with rats. Oh, damn, where the OG's at? Give me young, fresh, and I'll kill these bags fast. Ain't no amount of money keep you from me. And I'm broke, but ain't no joke. And I still do this for the brodies. If you knew me, you would kill me. If you don't, then you don't know me. When I find you, you will play that. let you meet my little homie. Ah. I'll let you meet my little homie. Not the level. Kid and now who's double black in the best. Let you meet my little homies. One time.
That's the hottest spot, the real ones.